Hello, um, I had Ancient China and the Huang Ho River, and this is my box. This picture is of all of China, then over here we have the Shang Dynasty, which is what I focused on mainly for this. It was the first recorded dynasty in China, and I went ahead and on my box I have pictures of the Huang Ho River around it with the words of what I'm going to talk about, what's in my box. So here we have one picture, and I have family and silk. Let me turn it. I have bones. Over here is another picture, and I have social pyramid and bronze. And then finally, I have silt. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the silt. And this is because I'm going to talk about the Huang Ho River. So here's my silt before I start talking. The Huang Ho River is where all of the dynasties settled, and in the, riv the river is over 3,000 miles long. It's the second longest river in China. In the river, there is a lot of yellow silt, and at the beginning of civilization, there were a lot of floods from the river, and this caused a lack of fertilization in China because it would overflow and take over the farmlands, and it wasn't good for the soil. So they weren't, it wasn't very good for farming. And um, so that is why I have the yellow silt because it's also called the Yellow River. And I'm going to use this in my class by, I'm going, by showing this before we talk about it and asking them what they, where they think the silt came from to get to the river and what it did to the fertilization. So then we'll compare what happened and see what they thought and what actually happened. The next thing I have is, I have two things actually, silk, and I have a metal that's bronze, and that's to represent two of the things that were created during this time. They made silk, and that was what the highest, most powerful, richest people wore, and it is one of the biggest contributions China has ever had to society. The bronze, they made jugs, pots, they actually made chopsticks out of bronze, they made vessels and all kinds of things and today bronze is used a lot so it was another good, big contribution they had. So what I would do with these is before I taught them what they contributed to society I'd show them these, ask if they would be good contributions today and if not what they think they could contribute to society today that would get them money, help them become wealthy and live off of that money. The third thing I have is a picture of my family and the reason I have this is before we talked about the family I would have the students bring in a picture of their family which I will explain in a minute but family was very important in China and the father or oldest male always ruled the family so if there was no father the oldest brother took over and no matter what age a male was a woman was to listen to him so a mom had to listen to anything her son said Women were basically owned by the men and told what to do. The daughters were, by the age of 13, they were arranged to be married, and as late as 16, but they were very young when they were arranged to be married. And the oldest male also was in charge of all of the land and everything that went along with the home in ancient China. So what I would have them do when they brought in their picture, I would have them have their family picture and then they'd create an ancient Chinese family and they'd compare the two and how they are similar and different to each other. The fourth thing I have is a pyramid that I created and this is to represent the social pyramid in China. China actually had their people divided into two main categories and this was nobles and peasants. The nobles were those who governed China and who owned all the land. They were in charge of everything. And then there was peasants who were basically slaves for the nobles, and they did all of their work for them. And then the third category was the king, so he had his own category. So I went king, nobles, and then peasants. And what I have here is the pyramid I created. It, I have four different levels because what I would do is have each student make, cut out a net of a pyramid and create their own pyramid. 
and then I want them to divide it into how many different levels they think the school or the classroom is divided into. This way they can compare the fact that there is social division everywhere, even in school. And what I did, I did four because to me it's the Board of Education and then the superintendents and principals, the teachers, and then the students at the bottom. So that was my representation of the social pyramid in a school. And finally, I have a dog bone, which represents oracle bones and the origin, origination of language in ancient China. Like I said earlier, the Shang Dynasty is the first recorded history in China. And the reason it's the or what they found writings on to make it the first um, known facts in history were animal bones and things such as turtle shells, so parts of animals. They found inscriptions on these bones, and that is what they are using to, or what they have used to determine things about the Shang Dynasty. So what I would do when we were talking about this is hopefully find one of these for every student or put them in pairs and I would have them figure out a way to make inscriptions or writings on them to see how difficult that was and how hard it is to distinguish what is written on there so they could get a feel for that. So again, my artifacts were my yellow silt to represent the Huang Ho River, my silk and bronze for their contribution to society, my family picture, because family was very important, my social pyramid, and my dog bone to represent oracle bones. And that's it. Thank you.